And that's why tree stars change color before the cold times. Wow, that was a great one, Grandpa. Yes, tell us another story so we can listen to it. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I know. Once many cold times ago, there was a young longneck named Star Watcher. Every night, he climbed to the top of a hill to look at the sky stars. But one night, the sky stars decided to come down out of the sky. They wanted to take a look at the long neck who was always looking at them. The sky stars said hello to Star Watcher and asked if he would like to visit them up in the sky. Are you sure that's how it happened? Huh? I'm not so sure you're telling that story right. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come follow me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. You must be forgetting the stories in your old age. Sorrow, is that you? It's me, all right. I thought I'd never find you. I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd given up hope. I never gave up. Like green food in cold times, it, it may shrink, shrink away, away, but, but it, it will always grow back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa? Who is this? Children, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. His name is Sorrow. It's a pleasure to meet you all. But who's this? A sharp tooth? <laughs> oh, that's Chomper. He was hatched by Littlefoot. And now he's living with us. Yeah. I want to learn how different dinosaurs can all get along. Well, you couldn't have found a better teacher. It was good to hear you tell one of the long neck stories again. Grandpa's great at telling stories. Oh, I know. Your grandpa was a great story speaker. Story speaker? What's that? A story speaker would travel the land, telling the great long neck stories to all the long neck herds. And you were a story speaker, Grandpa? Your grandpa was one of the finest story speakers ever. I tried to learn every story I could from him. Oh, well, I, I just wanted everyone to remember our important past. <laughs> Me like stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, Sorrow, could you tell us one of the great long neck stories? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we might be able to remember a story or two. Now, who knows how long necks got their name? Oh, it is because they have long necks. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone knows that. But did you know that long necks didn't always have long necks? They didn't? Many cold times ago, before you or I had hatched, Long necks had short necks. Back then, the trees were very short, so they could eat tree stars from the top of the trees. The trees would sing to the bright circle every day as it crossed the sky. 
the bright circle liked their song so much that it reached down and pulled the trees until they were very tall. That way, they would be closer to the sky when they sang their bright circle songs. But now, the tree stars were so high that the short-necked long necks couldn't reach them. That night, the night circle felt sorry for them and reached down to comfort them. The light made them feel better. And so, they lifted their heads up to get closer to the night circle. In doing so, their necks stretched enough to reach the tree stars. The kindness of the night circle helped us become long necks. And that is how long necks got their long necks. That was a very good story. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Looks like talking about tree stars made Spike hungry. Great to get to tell stories all the time. It is an honor to tell the great long neck stories. And a very important job. But some of the long necks have begun to forget their stories. That's why you have to come back and be a story speaker again. I, what? Oh, I don't think I can. We'll travel the land, telling everyone the great long neck stories, just like we used to. It sounds like a nice idea. So, you're going to be the story speaker again, Grandpa? Of course he is! Sorrow, I'm sorry. I know how important the stories are. And I loved being a story speaker, but that was long ago. Things are different now. What do you mean, Grandpa? My place is here in the Great Valley, with you and Grandma and all the others. But. You're the story speaker. The long necks need you. I need you. I can't tell the stories on my own. Sorrow, I am very sorry. But even though my days of wandering have passed... Then you've turned your back on the long necks and all of our traditions. Sorrow, wait! I have nothing left to say to you. bad for sorrow. He's hurt and angry, and I don't want him to feel that way. I had hoped he and I would be able to tell the great stories together. Uh, but those days are long gone. Remembering, remembering is a kind of a funny thing. It makes me think of time gone by. Friends are made by saying hi. Thoughts I'll always hold dear. Remembering makes reappear. But even when the thoughts are sad, I'll always have remembering. Remembering. 
I had hoped Saro would someday become a story speaker. He knows the stories as well as I ever did. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I never had the chance. And now Saro's too angry to listen to me. Well, it's sad, really. I'm, I've already begun to forget some of the Long Neck stories. I can't let the Long Neck stories be lost. I've got to find Saro. Sarah's footprints lead out into the mysterious beyond. Who? Who is it? <gasps> Come on out. I I'm not scared of you. Why would you be scared of me? Oh, Chomper. I, I was just... What are you doing? I'm following you. What are you doing? I'm following Sorrow's footprints. I have to bring him back. Grandpa wants him to be the new story speaker. Wow! Then you're going to need my sniffer so you can find him fast. I got him! Then let's go. to the fast water. Wow, it looks big. Maybe to us, but Sorrow's a full-grown long neck. He could just walk across. Maybe we can walk across too. See, it's not that deep. Whoa! <laughs> I think it might just be a little too deep for me to walk across. Hmm. It might not be too deep for me. See? Can I get a ride? Sure, hop on. Thanks. Now just keep going straight. Like Sorrow probably just stepped right over this ledge. But it's too high for me. Almost! Almost! Not quite. But maybe a whole pile of rocks will help us climb over. Too bad Sarah's not here. She's really good at pushing things around. There. That should do it. Let's give it a try. Yeah. It worked, little foot. We make a pretty good team, Chomper. Yeah, we do. Now let's go try to catch up with Sorrow. His smell is getting stronger. Come on, little foot. I'm coming, I'm coming. See? There he is. Littlefoot? Chomper? What are you doing following me? We came to ask you to come back to the Great Valley. You need to talk to my grandpa. I don't have anything more to say to him. Why are you so mad at Littlefoot's grandpa? If he doesn't come with me to be the story speaker, all the great stories will be forgotten. Well, why can't you be the story speaker? Well, because he's the story speaker. I can't do it by myself. 
I can't. Look! Sliding rocks! Oh no! followed me. Those rocks are now blocking the way back to the Great Valley. Oh no, we're trapped. What are we gonna do? We will be okay. Maybe we can climb over. There's no way. We might be stuck here forever. Chomper, just take a deep breath. And calm down. I don't think I can. It's dark and it's stuffy. Close your eyes. Think of a sky filled with puffies. Until we can find a way out of here. But what if you can't dig out of these rocks? What will we do to survive? Did your grandpa ever tell you the story of Tall Stepper? Tall Stepper? I don't think so. Tall Stepper grew up to be a great long neck leader. But when he was young, just about your age, he learned a great lesson about being brave. Tall Stepper and his little sister were playing one day and having a great time. They were having so much fun that the wind became very jealous. The wind swirled and blew around Tall Stepper's sister and carried her into the air and up into its wind cave in a tall, tall mountain. Tall Stepper was scared to follow the wind up into its wind cave, but he knew that if he was going to save his sister, that is what he would have to do. When Tall Stepper reached the cave, the wind made a deal with him. If he could beat the wind in a race down the mountain, his sister would be released. Tall Stepper knew it would be dangerous, but he knew he had to do it to save his sister. No one had ever beaten the wind before. Tall Stepper found the courage he needed to race faster than any long neck before him. Because Tall Stepper found courage when he was afraid, he was able to beat the wind down the mountain. The wind kept his promise and brought Tall Stepper's sister back from the cave. Tall Stepper grew into a great leader. And whenever he needed to be brave, he remembered how he once had the courage to beat the wind. And sometimes, when I need courage, I think of Tall Stepper too. 
Wow. Thanks for telling us that story, Sorrow. Yeah. I feel better now. Littlefoot! Littlefoot! Grandpa? Littlefoot? Yeah, I hear him too. Grandpa? Grandpa? Littlefoot, me find you. Petrie! What are you doing here? Me find them. Everyone, over here! you guys find us? We followed your footprints to follow you up into the canyon. Then we heard at the rock slide. We heard you yelling, too. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Sorrow, there's something I want to talk to you about. About what I said earlier? I'm sorry about that. No, no, Sorrow. I think you should be the new story speaker. Me? But I, I can't tell the great stories without you. But Sara, you told us a story. The one about Tall Stepper. We were really scared, but your story helped us feel a lot better. You see, Sara, you saw a chance for one of the great stories to teach something important at a time of need. That's what a good storyteller does. That's what a story speaker does. So, you really think I'm ready to be a story speaker? I know you are. Me too. That's right. Mm -hmm. I just wish I had told you earlier. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I thought story speakers always had something to say. Maybe you're right. In fact, this reminds me of the story about the very first story speaker. Her name was First Voice. One day, First Voice came upon a great cave. But when she walked into the cave, she began to hear the footsteps of a 